So where did you get your start in the restaurant business? In the restaurant business, I started when I was 15 years old at a, 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 um, at a snack bar in Verona, New Jersey. Uh, I was 15 years old and I was hired as counter help, but always felt that the guys in the back, the guys cooking the food, always had the most fun. So I, uh, I worked three summers uh, at the, uh, the snack bar and worked my way through college uh, at a pizzeria in Verona, Armando's. These were where I got my, you know, I learned how to cook, how to batch cook, how to scratch cook from him. Um, through college though, you know, I thought that I would get a regular job. Um, and, I, and I tried, I got a couple jobs that weren't in the food industry, but it always came back. I always came back to the, to the kitchen because it was something I was good at, it was a natural, you know, not that my food tasted so great, but that I, uh, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the rough and tumble of, of, of getting crushed and working, way, working way, way, my way out of it. Um, organizational uh, aspect of it, I think is awesome. Um, the, uh, you know, walking out to the dining room, I, used to, I did it at a very young age uh, to see how people enjoyed the food. Um, and I would always say that I'm, I don't come out to get the accolades. They're, they're much appreciated, but if there's anything that I could do to improve, uh, I would do that. And um, it was, I did try to get out of the business a couple of times. Uh, I managed uh, a couple of golf courses, uh, uh, Tom's River Country Club and Colonia Country Club. I was front of the house then. Uh, but then after that, I found that I was better in the back. You know, t too much uh, front of the house and, and, and customer uh, interaction wasn't my best. I was a suited for that. My personality wasn't so much suited for that. So I went back into the, into the, uh, into the business. Uh, I didn't take any, uh, um, oh, I forgot to tell you that I was, a, I was executive chef at, uh, at the Sheraton in Newark Airport. Um, I was there for four years. I could have, I could have written my own ticket to go, uh, to, to go further, but I always felt that the cooks, because I don't have any culinary, like schooling behind me, everything was hard knocks and, and experience. I always felt that the cooks knew more than I did. So after I went through the stint of the golf, of the golf clubs out of the front of the house, I went back to the, uh, into the industry as a cook. I wanted to do line work. I wanted to really get more into high volume uh, banquets and things like that. Um, I worked at the Navison Country Club full time uh, and also do process full time at the same time. Uh, after two years of that though, it really got, um, it got crazy, you know, physically, emotionally, I said, I just wanted to do, so I concentrated on finding it, uh, you know, one job. So you helped open uh, Waypoint 622 in Rio. And that's when that happened, yes. Okay, and then, uh, and then a few years after that uh, came this concept for Waterman's Tavern. Yes. What's the concept here? Uh, classic American Steakhouse. Uh, we have 45-day prime dry-aged uh, uh, ribeyes, New York strips, porterhouses. Um, we have bison. Uh, you know, bison, uh, uh, New York strips, Colorado lamb chops, um, you know, things you would find at a lot of, a lot of places, uh, New York, we, we, uh, Larry, the owner, uh, and I have gone down to Florida and hit some of the nicer restaurants down there to get some ideas uh, for the sides, you know, the, the cream spinach, the tavern potatoes, uh, Brussels sprouts, grilled asparagus, smoked corn, um, we also wanted to put some uh, pastas on there, so we have a sacchetti pasta, which um, is very well received. Kind of, it kind of, it, it's not what you would expect at American, you know, American steakhouse. But uh, and then we then we decided that you know because the place is so big and you know steaks are sort of expensive, uh, we wanted to have a concept that is more uh, well respected, you know, well. Accepted, I should say, and that's the tavern menu. We have um, great burgers. We have a New York. Uh, I mean, we have a uh, uh, Angus ten ounce uh, steak burger. Uh, we have a dry aged burger. We have a couple chicken uh, sandwiches and entrees. We have a great pizza program, calzones, strombolis, uh, some pastas in there, like rollatini, you know, uh, uh, chicken and ribs. A lot for you know, and it's a little less expensive than, than coming you know, to the steakhouse. Although you know, both both concepts are awesome. And then the third the third prong of the wheel is the banquets. We have a, an 80 person seat in the atrium, 
Um, we have a um, that we do you know, anything from baby showers, bridal showers, birthdays, and stuff like that. Up to 80 people. And we have uh, we can rent out this room, uh, the main dining room. We have a prime room that seats 45 in the back for, for again for for the, you know those type of things. And then we also have a a nice uh, uh, back area, uh, the uh, Acacia room, which is it tops out at about 16 people, but it's a private room. Uh, you have this private menu, you know, the place is all yours, your private Wi-Fi, you, know, you, know, you, you have your own waitress and stuff like that. It's a, it's a nice place for intimate gatherings and corporate affairs. And the atrium is where you also have uh, brunch on Sundays, right? The Sunday brunch is, happens at the atrium. It's, in the atrium, it's, it's nice. It's, it's, it's all glass. Uh, the sun comes in on the other side of the building, so it's not right, it's not right in your eye. Uh, we have uh, 16 different uh, varieties of food. You know, including an omelet, you know, including omelets to order, um, bacon, eggs, that other thing, you know, things like chicken, pastas, uh, fish. There's always a fish entree out there. There's some kids stuff out there, you know, fingers and, and pizza, uh, stuff like that. Uh, so, as a relatively new restaurant, what are some of the favorite uh, recipes that that uh, the consumer likes here? We, uh, like I said, the sacchetti is is very popular. Maybe because it's an it's an appetizer, maybe because it's a pasta, and it's something that they they you can't find around here anywhere. Um, I think all the steaks go very well. Um, in the beginning, I was very um, apprehensive about bringing in such a high end item into the thing and why and worrying about the inventory and costs of, of, of the of the of the food. But we we blow through eighteen ounce uh, ribeyes, the bone in ribeyes, uh, New York strips. Uh, you know, we have a, a forty. Two ounce uh, pr uh, porterhouse steak that we cut. Uh, we cut uh, table side. We go through about three or four of those a week. It doesn't sound like a lot, but it's you know it's a, it's it's the presentation is awesome. You know we come out of the kitchen, we get to come out of the kitchens and, and meet the meet the guests. Uh, all the cooks enjoy coming out and, and, and doing it. I started it and then trained the other guys how to do it. Um, and it's it's a good interaction. You know it's great. To, I think it's always it's very important for um, the back of the house to see what happens in the front of the house and to meet the people that, that, they're, that, that they're eating their food and get the, you know, get the accolades and, and then look, we learn more from what people don't like sometimes than what they do. Fortunately, uh, we've been, it's been well, well received. Where do you get your ideas for new menu items? Well, I, I'm, a, I'm a deconstructionist. In other words, I like, I like to look at books and, and magazines and, and other menus and not not so much steal them because I think we all steal from one another. But there's so many different ways to make a shrimp scampi or a chicken franchise or whatever um, that you know. Sometimes you, I like to, to mix things and uh, create you know create items that are the best of both of those and combine them into one. Um, do I have a specific um, formula? No. I, you know, like I said, I'll take stuff that I hear out. When I, when I go around to guests and say, yeah, they really like this, but this could be, then I mix it and I, and I, and I try to work on that. You know, Larry is awesome because he goes out, he goes out to eat almost every night. Um, he goes to Florida, he, go, he goes, you know, he just came back, from, came back from Italy. And every time he goes someplace, I get inundated with emails and, and texts and pictures and, and all kinds of stuff. And the reason he does that is so that I'll get the ideas. He's not asking me to emulate, but he's looking for the ideas. So if I mix these ideas up, a lot of times, you, you, you know, a lot of times it works out for us, you know. So where do you eat on your day off? My wife is a great cook. You know, she's, you know, when we, when we got married, she didn't come from a cooking background at all, but uh, just, uh, I guess being with me for some th almost 30 years, it's kind of rubbed off and she, you know, she does a really nice job. You know, you know, like, a, I liken it to a, a mechanic always has the worst running car of his own because he's always doing some, fixing somebody else's car. I think that runs rings true here because when I get out, you know, I'd rather have a good grilled cheese sandwich or a pizza somewhere. Um, I'm very into casual. I'm not. A, I'm not a much of a, 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 a. I guess I'm a little ADD. I don't like to sit down too long. That's why I'm probably good at this business because you don't get a chance to sit down. Um, yeah. My wife probably has more a better answer for her favorite place to go because as long as she's happy, I'm happy. I'll go there. So over the forty years you've been in the business, you've had a lot of great meals, I guess. Mm -hmm. What's your most memorable? Uh, I was uh, I was lucky enough when I was at uh, Westchester University in, in the, uh, as a food and beverage uh, manager. 
we had uh, Gerald Ford actually came. Uh, he wasn't president then; he was, he was after he was president. But he was um, he was on a, on a speaking tour, and uh, he we had to create dinner for him. And uh, you know, I had to get vetted by the Secret Service, and you know, there was people in the kitchen. You know, it was called Tanglewood, and that was where the, the president of the university lived. So I had to work in her kitchen. Her, him, his, him, him and her, um, yeah. and uh, I, you know he was. You know, Gerald Ford was a very down-to-earth person. Um, he didn't want any, you know, flamboyant stuff. So I went right to the, my peasant roots with Armando's in Verona, and uh, I made him veal prosciutto and peas. You know, it's veal scallopini, sautéed onions, peas, prosciutto. It's all tossed in there. A little bit of butter, a little white wine. And it was just so cool. And it was, the best thing was after we served it, the Secret Service was, <laughs> was like reaching for bread and they were all dipping it and eating it. And it was nice. And then we had to do a reception for him and I actually met him. I shook his hand, which I think is pretty cool. You know, when I was at Seton Hall, uh, President Reagan was also, you know, when he was, when he was um, um, campaigning, went there. I didn't meet him, but I helped, I helped prepare some of that food. Oh yeah, things like that. Uh, there's so yeah, there's a lot. In 40 years, it's a lot, and yeah, it gets jumbled up in there. <laughs> so last meal, what are you gonna eat? My last meal? Yep. Pizza. The good pizza. Where do you get good pizza? I I I, I make my own. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but around here, there's uh, there's Danino's uh, and, and Brick. Uh, they're they're very good. Um, there's a place that opened up in the Tom's River in, Sim in Silverton, I forget now, uh, Brooklyn something pizza. They actually put like the uh, sesame seed right on the thing. I don't know how he does it. I don't know how he makes it stay in there, you know. He brushes it with white, with egg whites or something, but that's nice. It's, yeah, it's a cool place. But both of those places are, you know, to bring your own casual places, you know. Um, I haven't found a really, I mean, yeah. I'd like to try this uh, La Mandina that just opened up. Um, it's a beautiful, you know, beautiful place in there. Uh, but I haven't tried their food there yet. So. so if you could have dinner with three people, who would they be? Uh, Rush Limbaugh. Um, and it's not because of any other reason that, you know, I just, they enjoy what he, you know, what he has to say. So, look, the, you know, power is power. I mean, Donald Trump, I'd like to, have, you know, sit with him and, 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 you know, I think good, good conversation, you know, the food and, and the tables around to, to promote conversation. So I would, I would probably throw in, a Barack Obama or or somebody there, and, and make sure that the dinner rolls are soft <laughs> <laughs> because they'll be thrown around. But I think that's good. I think you know, I'm a little bit of a political junkie. I try to keep my my, my thoughts to myself for the most part, but I failed miserably. <laughs> we'll have a great summer. Thanks very much. Thanks. Jim.